Greetings, and welcome to the Home Depot second quarter 2021 earnings call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. A brief question and answer session will follow the formal presentation. If anyone should require operator assistance during the conference, please press star zero on your telephone keypad. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded. It is now my pleasure to introduce your host, Isabel Jancy. Please go ahead. Quarter 2021 earnings call. Joining us on our call today are Craig Minear, Chairman and CEO, Ted Decker, President and Chief Operating Officer, and Richard McVale, Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer. Following our prepared remarks, the call will be open for questions. Questions will be limited to analysts and investors, and as a reminder, please limit yourself to one question with one follow-up. If we are unable to get to your question during the call, please call Investor Relations at 770-384-2387. Before I turn the call over to Craig, let me remind you that today's press release and the presentations made by our executives include forward-looking statements as defined in the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. These statements are subject to risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from our expectations and projections. These risks and uncertainties include, but are not limited to, the factors identified in the release and in our filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Today's presentations will also include certain non-GAAP measures. Reconciliation of these measures is provided on our website. Now, let me turn the call over to Craig. Thank you, Isabel, and good morning, everyone. We appreciate you joining us on our call this morning. We were pleased with our performance in the second quarter as we achieved over $40 billion in quarterly sales for the first time in our history. Sales for the second quarter were $41.1 billion, up 8.1% from last year. Comp sales were up 4.5% from last year, with the U.S. comps of a positive 3.4%. Diluted earnings per share were $4.53 in the second quarter, up from $4.02 in the second quarter last year. The strong underlying demand across the business continues. During the second quarter, we did observe some changing consumer patterns in the US, as the U.S. economy opened up. This has manifested itself in several ways. We have seen a shift in pattern of sales within the week as our weekday sales performance has actually strengthened relative to the weekend. We attribute this to consumers returning to travel and other recreational activities. And while the consumers returning to pre-pandemic activities, we continue to see them engaged in home improvement projects. We also see uh, customers more comfortable taking on larger projects as evidenced by the continued strength with our pro customer, which outpaced the DIY customer for the second quarter in a row. We remained agile and flexible and were pleased with our ability to respond to strong home improvement demand and comp the comp in the second quarter. We had positive comps every week despite unprecedented compares last year and grew sales by $3.1 billion in the second quarter and more than $12 billion year to date. Over the last six quarters, we have grown the business by more than $34 billion, a level unmatched in our market. From a geographic perspective, 15 of our 19 U.S. regions posted positive comps versus last year. On a two-year stack basis, all 19 regions saw strong double-digit comp growth. However, unlike the past four quarters, the second quarter we did experience some variability in performance from a geographic perspective. The variability in our regional performance is driven by our northern division, where we saw a more pronounced shift in sales with stronger sales in outdoor seasonal categories during the first quarter. Mexico posted double-digit positive comps, and despite significant customer restrictions during the quarter due to COVID-19, Canada posted comps that were essentially flat in local currency. We continue to effectively manage the strong demand for home improvement products despite significant industry disruptions in supply chains. 
We are leveraging the scale of our supply chain and partnership with our vendors to prioritize key SKUs in high demand categories. And while our in-stocks are not where we want them to be, they have improved from where they were a year ago, and our network continues to flow goods remarkably well thanks to the investments we have made in our supply chain over a number of years. The team continues to make progress on building out our one Home Depot supply chain vision. We remain largely on track with our plans with the critical mass of buildings scheduled to come online this year and next. We believe that the network we are building is unique to the market. It will not only enhance the customer experience from a delivery standpoint, but also expand the breadth and depth of our current opportunity set, drive efficiency end to end, and leverage our scale to further extend our low cost position in home improvement. In the near term, we remain focused on being flexible and agile as we navigate this dynamic environment. But we also continue to leverage the momentum of our strategic investments to further enhance the interconnected shopping experience in support of our goals to drive growth faster than the market in any environment, further strengthen our position as a low-cost provider in home improvement with a relentless focus on productivity and efficiency, and deliver exceptional shareholder value. Throughout all the events of the past 18 months, our culture has remained our North Star. In fact, I recently spent time with a number of new associates that we have hired in the past year and was struck by how engaged and connected these associates were to the Home Depot culture. They were onboarded during a time when our stores and teams were busier than ever, but our associates took the time to get to know these new folks and share what it means to be part of the orange-blooded family. Our ability to invest for the future while also managing the most fluid environment in our company history is a direct result of our associates and their extraordinary efforts. I want to close by thanking them for the many ways they continue to live our values by serving our customers, communities, and each other. And with that, let me turn the call over to Ted. Thanks, Craig, and good morning, everyone. I want to start by also thanking all of our associates and supplier partners for their commitment to serving our customers and communities. As you heard from Craig, during the second quarter, we continue to see strong performance in our business, particularly as we lapped a significant growth from the same period last year. We were able to meet strong customer demand despite ongoing pressures throughout the supply chain. Raw material shortages, production constraints, and pressures across modes of transportation are creating a difficult supply chain environment. That being said, our performance would not be possible without the cross-functional efforts by our supply chain, merchandising, store, and MET teams as we continue to flow record volumes of goods week after week. Over the course of the pandemic, you've heard us talk about a number of initiatives we've implemented, many in concert with our suppliers to improve our in-stock positions and get product to our customers and our teams continue to use our culture and values to guide our decisions. One of our values is entrepreneurial spirit, which is alive and well at the Home Depot. Our supply chain teams recently leveraged our scale and flexibility to arrange for several container vessels for our exclusive use. Yet another way, our teams found a creative solution to better serve our customers in this dynamic environment. While our in-stock levels are still not where we want them to be, we are maintaining the improvements we made over the last few quarters and building depth in key categories, as evidenced by inventory growing faster than sales compared to the same period last year. Turning to our comp performance, during the second quarter, 10 of our 14 merchandising departments posted positive comps, led by kitchen and bath and lumber. During the second quarter of this year, we saw single-digit negative comps in paint, hardware, and indoor and outdoor gardens. It is important to note that these were some of our strongest performing departments during the second quarter of last year. On a two-year stack basis, each of our departments posted healthy double-digit comps. Our comp average ticket increased 11.3% and comp transactions decreased 6%. The growth in our comp average ticket was driven in part by inflation in certain categories, notably lumber. On a two-year stack basis, both comp average ticket and comp transactions were healthy and positive. This was another historic quarter for lumber price volatility, 
During the first few weeks of the second quarter, prices for both framing and panel lumber reached all-time highs before quickly falling from their peaks. As an example, during the second quarter, framing lumber peaked at approximately $1,500 per thousand board feet before falling over $1,000 to approximately $500. While pricing for both framing and panel has come down from the peaks, the average price during the second quarter was still significantly higher than the same period last year. Inflation from core commodity categories positively impacted our average ticket growth by approximately 420 basis points during the second quarter. Big ticket comp transactions, or those over $1,000, were up approximately 24% compared to the second quarter of last year. We saw big ticket, ticket strength across many pro-heavy categories like lumber, vinyl plank flooring, gypsum, and pipe and fittings. During the second quarter, pro sales growth outpaced DIY growth for the second quarter in a row. On a two-year stack basis, growth with our pro and DIY customers was consistent and strong. We're encouraged by the momentum we are seeing with our pros. Growth with our larger pros continues to outpace that of our smaller pros, and they tell us that their backlogs are long and growing. In fact, the National Association of Home Builders Remodeling Index hit all-time highs during the second quarter. And during the quarter, we saw many of our customers turn to pros to help them with larger renovation projects. This can be seen in the strength of several of our kitchen and bath categories, like in-stock kitchens, tubs and showers, and vanities, all of which posted one-year and two-year comps above the company average. Sales leveraging our digital platforms were essentially flat during the second quarter, as we lapped digital sales growth of approximately 100% in the second quarter of last year. On a two-year stack basis, sales from our digital platforms increased approximately 100%. We're thrilled with the customer engagement across our interconnected platforms. We know the vast majority of our customers engage with us in an interconnected manner, whether it be through project inspiration and research, transacting, fulfillment, or support, our customers blend the physical and digital worlds. And while customers have gotten more comfortable buying online, we've never been more confident in the importance of our physical stores as they remain the center of our customer experience due to the project nature of our business. For those customers that chose to transact with us online during the second quarter, more than 55% of our online orders were fulfilled through our stores, a testament to the power of our interconnected retail strategy. As we look forward to the back half of the year, we know our pros are busy, and we are working hard to secure the best products to help our pros get their jobs done. Last quarter, we highlighted several exclusive products for our pro customers. This quarter, we're excited to announce a new big box home improvement exclusive relationship with LP Building Solutions, a top provider of OSB panel boards. In addition, we are pleased with the momentum we are seeing with our Pro Extra loyalty program. Several quarters ago, we relaunched Pro Extra and we've been thrilled with the membership take-up and engagement we are seeing. ProExtra offers more frequent touch points with our pros and convenient services like purchase tracking and volume pricing, along with other benefits. In addition, all ProExtra members are now able to access our B2B Pro online experience, offering pros more personalization on homedepot.com. During the third quarter, we are also thrilled to announce the rollout of what we believe is the most innovative paint offering in years through our exclusive relationship with Bear. Bear Dynasty is a brand new four-in-one interior paint that offers DIYers, pro painters, and design professionals a unique product exclusively from the Home Depot. It is our most stain repellent, scuff resistant, fast drying, one coat coverage paint, all in one can. With that, I'd like to turn the call over to Richard. Thank you, Ted, and good morning, everyone. <clears throat> in the second quarter, total sales were $41.1 billion, an increase of $3.1 billion, or 8.1% from last year. 
foreign exchange rates positively impacted total sales growth by approximately $385 million. During the second quarter, our total company comps were positive 4.5% with positive comps in all three months. During the quarter, we saw total company comps of 4.7% in May, 3.9% in June, and 4.9% in July. Comps in the U.S. were positive 3.4% for the quarter, with comps of 3.1% in May, 2.7% in June, and 4.3% in July. In the second quarter, our gross margin was 33.2%, a decrease of approximately 80 basis points from the same period last year. While there are many factors that impact gross margin, the year-over-year -year change during the second quarter was primarily driven by lumber, which accounted for approximately 60 basis points of pressure. In addition, several other factors negatively impacted our gross margin, including rising transportation costs, one supply chain investments, and lapping a benefit from canceled events in the second quarter of last year. During the second quarter, operating expense as a percent of sales decreased approximately 100 basis points to 17.1%. Our operating leverage during the second quarter reflects significant COVID-related expenses that we incurred in the second quarter of 2020 to support our associates. These expenses were partially offset by underspend and other expense items in the second quarter of last year, 